and today we are here presenting a standing frozen rib roast and what's surprising and extremely different than what I was taught years ago we are going from frozen to the cutting board to the plate that's right that's a technique that we use at home a lot and we use it at the farmers market because well for several reasons first of all you don't have any contamination of your refrigerator or your countertop or your sink of raw meat juices. Also, if your dinner plans change, you just pop that right back in the freezer. You don't have any meat that's thawed out that you have to do something with. And we think it's very versatile. And of course, as a chef, I think it's, I think it's extremely convenient because we don't have to worry about setting an actual steak or a roast out, letting it thaw out for hours upon a time, or, or re-plan, or planning two, three, four days in advance on, on what and how to when to cook. My goodness, it's so nice now just to go from the freezer to the oven. I think this will turn out really nice and really surprise you on the effect of what it has. And Chef Steve, I have actually done this several times at home. I have cooked a prime rib from frozen and I have had it uh, uh, come out with a nice crust on it, uh, well done on the outside and medium rare on the inside. So that means even the novice cook can really enjoy this and almost have it foolproof. If I can do it, oh. anybody can do it. <laughs> well, I definitely understand that one. So actually, what we're going to start with is the frozen version of the standing rib roast. Mm -hmm. Right, and if it was in, when it's standing, does it look like this in the skillet or in the well, roaster? I prefer, I, I prefer to lay mine like this. Okay, with the bone side up? Yeah, bone side up with the, with the fat side down. It, it's it's kind of like, like, like a cushion in, and it won't get so rough or coarse at the bottom I do during cooking. Exactly the opposite. Oh. And so I guess it really is foolproof. Well, yeah, what works, works. Right. I do mine fat side up in order to baste it, but I didn't realize you could do it bone side yeah. up. Yeah. When you're doing a roast like this, you want to, you really want to use dry rubs. I wouldn't use fresh. They'll, they'll dry out, they'll lose their flavor real quick. Mm -hmm. But any kind of combination, wouldn't you think? Yes. And I'd be interested to hear what kind of a rub you put on your roast. And I'll tell you what I put on mine. Well, mine's a professional secret, but I'll let you know part of it. I guess something like, oh, garlic, salt, and pepper. You've always got your basics. Um, so for my, my, my basic, my, my base would be the garlic, salt, and pepper. Now, you know, one thing when you're seasoning something, you want to use what works. You want to use what you like. If you don't like oregano, guess what? Don't put it in there. Mm -hmm. You know, use, use things, don't you think? I do. I, I, would, I would definitely use something that you like. And, you know, of course, the family, too. Mm -hmm. But I put, uh, oh, my gosh, of course, I put I added the garlic to it, and I used a little bit of thyme. I used a little bit of basil. Mm -hmm. And, of course, these are all these are all chopped, uh, dried herbs. What do you think we do next? I guess, first thing, we would preheat the oven to somewhere around 450 to 500. I've had people tell me that their oven doesn't go to 500, maybe a max of 450. Mm -hmm. But go ahead and give it a good preheat. The reason we do that is because you want to get a good crust on the outside of your roast all the way around um, for two reasons. First of all, what it's going to do, it, it's going to put a little crunch mm -hmm. into, your, into your meat. You want to have your flavors and your textures. Your texture would be the, the added crunch to it. And the, the second reason is it's going to lock in that flavor in the lion and the, and the, you know, and the juices mm -hmm. and it, it that way when you cut it open it's going to be so much more happy mm -hmm. than if you don't okay once you have the plastic removed what you want to do is as i mentioned before you want to go ahead and rinse them off just a little bit which might soften just a little bit it, it'll it'll help the herbs mm -hmm. they won't um, stick to the dry very well oh yeah they don't stick to dry well and just season it just a little bit you can you can do that liberally. What you don't need will, of course, fall off the meat. Look at that nice fat layer. That'll absorb all the flavor. Oh yeah, and it'll it'll soften up the herbs too. Now don't forget, you also want to get the sides. Mm -hmm. Right. 
I like the end cuts of oh. roast. Oh, I'm more of a center. I like mine. I like mine rare to medium rare. How about mm. you? I like mine medium to medium well. So the beauty of doing this frozen is that it will cook to that medium rare in the center mm -hmm. and still be that nice medium to medium well on the outside. Okay, so here's how it's going to look right before we stick it into the preheated mm -hmm. oven. The oven is already hot from the last roast, and we will we just go. set the timer up. One rib should feed two people. I would say so. That's, that's so good. this is about what this looks like yeah, with the final product. Now, see, we, we let this sit out just a little while. I turned the oven off, let it sit for a few minutes, took it mm -hmm. out because it's going to be really hot mm -hmm. if you initially take it out too fast. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you notice, the juices aren't running wild. No, they're not. And, it, and it's definitely tender. It smells wonderful. You can push. Uh -huh. You can push on it. See the juice coming out? That's because I let it set. That's uh -huh. just a few minutes. Well, at least a few minutes. Uh -huh. Like I said before. Okay. Now, mm. see, now, does, let me ask you one question, folks. Does that look frozen? I mean, doesn't, doesn't that look good? It looks amazing. I mean, you know what? And that is definitely not frozen. Yeah. And, and I don't like my cooking all the time, but this time I do. I think this. <laughs> and, and how long did you cook that? Oh my goodness! Frozen? Let me I mean, see. Per pound or? Oh well, yeah. I went by the. Well, I'm not much of a pound person, but I'm gonna kind of mm -hmm. guess. Mm -hmm. So I, I gave it about uh, twenty to twenty-five minutes, which is a little per pound, okay. which is a little bit less than what a lot of people do. Mm -hmm. But I still gauge it. You know, there, there's absolutely nothing wrong with once or twice. Mm -hmm. to go ahead and stick your meat thermometer mm -hmm. which is him to yeah. stick your meat thermometer inside the in, inside the beef just to test it that's right well that looks amazing and are we going to get to taste a little bit of it you want to try it oh my I goodness think, yeah i think everybody here wants to taste a little bit of well, it. i think we should yes yes i don't think a cooking show is complete without somebody oh, tasting no. it. No, you, and you prefer in cuts, is that I what like you're in cuts, about? and if you'll cut that, that into maybe three pieces, I'll take one of those, because I I have a, I think I have a tiny mouth. Three pieces. I'll just take this right here. You sure? Yeah. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. Is that good? I am not faking. That crust got caramelized. It tastes sweeter. Oh yeah, I can feel that. It tastes sweeter. I don't know if you put anything sweet in there, but there's a sweetness to that crust. Would you like to try a bite? <laughs> Wonderful. Mm. Mm -hmm. Little bit of brown sugar. Mm. That's the trick. It is beautifully caramelized and it's very moist. And remember, what, three hours ago? Mm -hmm. This was frozen. Frozen hard. Mm -hmm. And you know, that is so nice for people that I take a lot less time than a turkey. Mm -hmm. And if you cook a turkey frozen, you have to cook it overnight for 12 hours at a very low temperature, which you can do. But that didn't take a very low temperature and overnight. You could start that in the morning at 9 o'clock and have a prime rib for Thanksgiving mm -hmm. or Christmas in three hours. And like I said, what I like, I can get up in the morning. I don't have to worry about, well, let me see, I got to set it out for normally a roast like this or a beef like this in the refrigerator would take three days to thaw out. Right. I, who's got that kind of time? I don't want to right. plan out that far ahead. Right. Well, I set it out and make it happy a little bit, play with it a little bit, stick in the oven and, and away we go. Everybody's going to love it and don't even tell them. That's At, right. When, when everybody's finished mm -hmm. eating, was that, was that uh, anything different? No. No, no difference, no. And then tell them, that was frozen. They will not believe you. That's right. The only thing that was different about it, it's the best prime rib I've ever had. Gosh, thanks. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because you cooked it from frozen. No, it's because it's legacy beef. Well, yeah. Missouri legacy yes. beef. So, yes. Well, that made it good. <laughs> but Chef Steve made the difference. Well, I had a lot of help. <laughs>